Hey, this is Brian Wall with WorshipTutorials.com. This is a tutorial for the song Broken Vessels, Amazing Grace on Hillsong's No Other Name album. I really like this kind of a different take on Amazing Grace. We have the one that Chris Tomlin did, Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone, which has been a very popular song. This puts a little different melody on uh, Amazing Grace, the hymn itself, and then adds some other stuff to it. It's a very cool song. So... On the record, uh, it's sung by a female, and they do it in the key of G. Um, for a male vocal, so if you're a female-led uh, band or team, or if you are have a, a female on your team that leads, uh, do it in that key, let them do it. Um, if you would like to do this uh, in a male-led key, I found that the key of B works pretty well. So I'm gonna show you how to play it in the key of G. So you can play it open G or you can capo up and go uh, higher if you'd like. So I'm gonna go capo four, which puts us in the key of B, which I found works well. Uh, for my voice, I'd say it's sort of a medium high range uh, for a guy. I can't sing too high, so if I can do it, um, that means there's a lot of people out there that can do it higher. <laughs> That's pretty much how I think about it. So Amazing Grace, uh, Broken Vessels, uh, key of B, it is 70.5 BPM on the album, 4-4 uh, four, four time. This one is really easy, really easy. So uh, I've done a couple tutorials. This is the third song that I have done from this album, and the other two, No Other Name, and this I believe, The Creed. Um, they're not that difficult, but they are more difficult than this one. So if you're looking for, if you're a beginner uh, and you're looking for a good song to start out on, this is a good one to do. So let's talk strumming pattern. Um, for the most part, uh, the, a lot of this song is kind of wide open. Like in the intro, I would just down strum. But uh, for the most part, you can kind of do one of two things. So you can up, down, up, down. You can also kind of do something uh, that I do a lot. It's like down, 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 up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down, up, down, 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 up, down. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and it sounds like this. I would do this sort of in bigger sections of the song because you can really dig into those downs. We do have a rhythm and strumming uh, section over at Worship Tutorials that I would encourage you to check out. We also, for this song, have a lot of resources available that you can get. We have chord charts, and they're in lots of different keys, um, including a number chart, so you can transpose it to any key that you would like. And uh, keys for both male and female-led uh, ranges, sort of low, medium, and high for each. So we have got you covered if you want to sing this song. That's available at Worship Tutorials. We also have a click track and a sort of pads and string kind of a loop track that goes along and it follows the same arrangement as the album. And it's the same arrangement that I have done on the chord video or the song video over at Worship Tutorials. So hit the link below or up here, check it out, and uh, hopefully those resources help you and your teams if you're going to do this song. Okay, so the chords we're going to use are your basic four chords in the key of G. We got G, I play it like this, C, D, and E minor. And E minor, you can play it this way. I think most of the time on this song, I kind of play this variation of E minor. So you can leave these two fingers pretty much planted the whole time, except for D if you want to pull your pinky off, uh, but you don't have to. So. In the beginning of this song, it's really mellow and kind of spacey. You don't want to strum a lot. So it's just E minor for measure. Three, four, G, two, three, four. E minor, two, three, four, G. If you want, you can kind of do some finger picking. Just 
just make sure they're one beat or one measure per chord. It repeats E minor G, E minor G for I believe eight measures. Either four or eight, I think it's four or eight measures, I'm not sure. Refer to the Nashville chart that we have available and it will show you exactly how the arrangement goes. Okay, so verse one is mostly just E minor to G. All these pieces broken and scattered in mercy gathered back to E minor mended and old G. Empty handed but not forsaken. <laughs> kind of goes high. I've been set to D. I've been set E minor, D, and then we get into the chorus. So I will sing the verse for you and the chords will move as I do. You'll see exactly how this goes. All these pieces broken and scattered in mercy gathered Chorus is, uh, that's actually the pre-chorus, and there's two different ways you play it. The first time, a couple times you get into it, it goes C, Amazing Grace, three, four, how D, sweet the sound, three, four, that E minor, saved a wretch like me, C. These are all whole note changes. Stay on the C for another beat, or another measure, once was lost, but D, now I'm found, was E minor blind, but now I see, see, <laughs> that's nice. And then you're back into the turnaround section, which is like the, uh, the, the intro. So it goes like this. I've been set free. Here's the back, last part of the verse. I've been set free. Oh, here's the chorus. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved. I can see you now, I can see the love in your eyes, and it goes like this. I can see you now, G, to D. I can see the love, E minor, in your eyes. Back to C, then you just repeat that, laying yourself down, G, to D, raising up the E minor broken to life, C. And then it goes back into the turnaround. <clears throat> so, was blind. This is the last part of the pre chorus. Blind, but now I see. Here comes the chorus. I can see you now. I can see the love. Okay, then you go verse 2, pre-chorus 2, chorus 2, and uh, then we get into the solo section that never ends on the record. Um, so on the album, the solo section is actually exactly the same. Once you hit the second chorus, you don't ever play the different chords. They stay E minor, C, G, D throughout the whole rest of the song. The progression never changes. So um, it's just a matter of what you're doing with that progression. So after the second chorus, you come into a solo section. And on the album, it is, I gotta make sure I get this right. It is 32 bars of a solo section, 32 measures of it. And uh, so 
I wouldn't do that if you don't have like 20 people on stage who know how to play with a lot of dynamics because it gets really boring really fast. I would actually do it eight bars, eight measures. So you, I would play the G to D to E minor to C. That was four measures. So they do that you know, eight times. to E minor to C. That was eight measures. And then they go into the pre-chorus. Amazing grace. That's what I would call pre-chorus two because it has a different progression, but it's just the same as the chorus. Uh, G, D, E minor, C. Um, so my advice is to cut that solo section to eight measures. If you want to do something kind of kind of interesting with it, do 16 measures. Um, if you really want to go all out, do 32 like Hillsong, but uh, make sure you can pull that off and it sounds interesting. Otherwise, I think you might lose people. That's what I would, I would not do it that long, personally. Um, and then the vocalist, the lead vocalist on the album kind of does a vocal solo in that part. They kind of do some O's going uh, on different melody parts, but that's my advice. So you get into the pre-chorus, uh, the chorus, and then you end it. So I'll just kind of end the song um, with the other chord progression. So you're in the uh, the bridge. Sorry, not the bridge. The solo instrumental. Let's say we're going right back into the pre-chorus. Amazing Grace, but now on a G. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that sings. Hillsong record um, continues on. This song is like 10 minutes long on the album. They just keep playing the solo section and then they go back into the pre-chorus, back into the chorus um, a lot. So you can do it as long as you would like, really. The, uh, the click tracks and things at Worship Tutorials follow the Hillsong album, except the solo section is only eight measures rather than 32, and it ends after the chorus after the solo section, which I think is a pretty good time for just a normal kind of a worship song. Of course, if you like a longer worship song set, you can just continue playing it. Um, just whatever fits your church and uh, your congregation best. Amen. 